Hey everyone, it has been quite a long time since I posted anything related to jewel orchids and this is largely due to two reasons. So reason number one is I've been really really busy with my PhD. If I haven't mentioned my PhD before, it's in the general realm of plant biochemistry. And the other reason is because I lost a lot of motivation on creating content. But in reading some of your comments on my posts, I actually realized people were really enjoying my scientific spin on jewel orchids rather than just the typical care and keeping information. So this is largely why I've chosen to go back into making a few videos. And luckily, my jewel orchids have survived. They've actually been thriving, so I'm excited to show off some of the updates on those. This video is going to be about the jewel orchid life cycle. So it's going to be a brief story from seed germination to vegetative reproduction all the way to dieback. And I think dieback is one of those things that it's really important to talk about because if you don't know what's happening, it's going to be really surprising to you and pretty terrifying, I may add, depending on how expensive your plant is, to see it dying right after it bloomed when it's actually just a normal process. I'm going to begin with the seedling phase of the life cycle, just because I have the least to say about this um, specific phase. Um, seedlings are typically thinner stemmed, more susceptible to changes in their environment, such as temperature, humidity, or light. And I would even venture to say that in general, these thin stems are likely meant to um, creep across the media in order to maximize the amount of nodes that are able to produce successfully. So if your seedling's not standing straight up, this is likely um, for that reason. This is what I deem the juvenile or pre-blooming phase of jewel orchids. This is the same Aspidigine argentia that you saw previously. The difference here is that the leaves are broader and the stem is thicker and upright. The plant that is being shown actually one of, is one of the pups that was produced off of the seedling from a node that was in contact with the sphagnum moss. Sadly, the mother plant got rot, but I was able to save this growth. Next, when the plant is old enough as well as large enough, the inflorescence will be induced. These inflorescences can sometimes grow into two or three times the height of the plant itself. The flowers then develop at the top of the long inflorescence. These can be pollinated by hand. I have a tutorial on how to do that in my jewel orchid pollination video on my channel check it out if you can. Post pollination, the seed capsules will typically take 21 to 25 days to form and you should notice swelling in the ovary in as little as four days after the pollination event. Now this is where the video starts to get interesting because I'm going to talk about die-off and monocarpism. Maybe you've noticed that after blooming your jewel orchid will produce a few pups and then your joy is slashed when you realize the mother plant is yellowing and dying. This is actually a natural process and it even has a name, monocarpism. Monocarpism is defined as the death of a plant after blooming or producing fruit. This here on the Ludicia spider-man is a pretty good example where you can see the mother plant dying off at the base and the much nicer new growth which is producing a bloom. I will add for accuracy's sake that I've not typically seen jewel orchids described as monocarpic plants so that's something I have derived from kind of anecdotal evidence however I am familiar with the process in Tillandsia or air plants if you ever wanted to go look it up. Don't worry there is an upside so after flowering your plant will begin producing pups these will grow off of each of the nodes. This here is Makoti's petala, and typically after brute looming, it will start slumping over across the media and creeping. This is to, again, give itself the best chance at producing successful pups that are able to root into the media itself. So you'll be left with all of these pups at each of the nodes, even though the mother plant may begin to yellow and die off, these plants will still be self-sustaining on their own. Also, this slumping or creeping nature of Makoti's petala is something good to remember. So after your plant blooms, you don't start freaking out because it's gotten wilty. 
Now I'm going to use my Ludiscia discolor as another example. So here I'll specifically be talking about maturation of pups. So remember that a life cycle is cyclic, so it goes in circles. So after you have the mother plant die off and produce pups, the pups will begin to actually flower at some point and then they will produce pups. There are about three generations of Ludicia pups in this pot. So the one I'm touching right now is the original mother plant, which will sadly begin to die off. And that's okay because I have all this new growth. Here is a better look at the first pup that was generated from the mother plant. It is in bloom now, so clearly it is doing well. I have staked it up. This is just for aesthetic reasons. And do keep in mind that after blooming, this will likely start to slump a little bit because it's getting ready for reproduction. I also thought it would be important to add in that after flowering is not the only time that a jewel orchid will start branching. So a plant may start to reproduce without flowering if there has been an injury in the case of this one. So clearly something happened. This would have been before I bought it but the plant was able to produce this branch from the last node available and now is quite strong and healthy. And then kind of as a tie up end to this video, I figured I would talk a little bit about tips and tricks for propagating these vegetative reproductions or pups of your plant. My main method of propagation is to do water propagation. And this is as simple as using a pair of sterile scissors to cut off the new plant. And then you're going to allow it to callus for about one day. And that can just be done on a piece of paper towel. And then you just pop it into some water. This is a close up of one week in water propagation. So you can see that this plant actually has new growth starting from the node near my second last finger. And you can see that some of the roots have actually started on some of the lower nodes. So eventually when this plant has enough roots, I will be able to put it back into media. Typically the media I like to use is a mix of 50% sphagnum moss to 50% perlite. And this is just so that the media stays airy and well draining while still being able to keep it consistently moist. So jewel orchids don't like to dry out completely. So that's why kind of the, sp the sphagnum moss amendment is important.